Imagine for a moment that you received a scholarship to your dream school in a city far from your hometown. In a moment of spontaneity, you accept the offer right away. Now, you are excited about the opportunity, but also you're scared to leave your home and your family and friends. To help ease your concerns and reaffirm your decision to go, Mia suggests creating a list of push and pull factors that highlight the benefits of moving. Take a moment to pause the video and record these factors in your PDF. Just like you might move at some point in your life for a school or job or just to fit your lifestyle better, people have been moving from one place to another throughout all of human history. In the first lesson of this unit, we introduced the concept of push and pull factors that lead to the movement of people. Today, we will explore these factors through the lens of three significant internal migrations in the United States during the 19th and 20th centuries. Remember, internal migrations involve the movement of people within a single country, while emigration refers to the moving out of a country, and immigration refers to the moving into a country. We'll answer the following guiding questions as we go. Why did members of the Church of Latter-day Saints settle in Utah? What caused the first Great Migration, and how did it impact northern cities? Why did the Okies and Arkies migrate west? We'll also address the essential question, how did economics, religion, and social issues prompt internal migration in the U.S.? Our first case study takes us back to the 19th century. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a Christian denomination that was established in the United States by Joseph Smith. The Church is unique in that its followers, known as Mormons, believe in modern prophets and additional scripture beyond the Bible. The Mormons were pushed out of New York and through the Midwest until they eventually found a home in Salt Lake City. The main factor repeatedly pushing Mormons from their homes was religious persecution. This persecution increased after Smith published the Book of Mormon, their sacred text used alongside the Bible. Some Christian branches saw this new religious movement and the additional religious text as offensive to their faith and began violent campaigns against Mormons. The other push factors for Mormons as they traveled were non-religious, including economic competition, rising land costs, and locals' fear of Mormon political control. These major push factors culminated during the Missouri-Mormon War of 1838, a violent conflict between Mormon and non-Mormon settlers in Missouri. Things got worse when the war resulted in Missouri's Executive Order 44, also known as the Mormon Extermination Order. This decree called for Missourians to execute or drive out all Mormons from the state. This major push factor led Mormons to flee and continue their migration westward. One last push factor came in 1844, when a mob in Illinois killed Joseph Smith. Mormons knew they needed to find a new home, but where? Let's analyze the pull factors as we discover their new home. The Mormons were drawn toward the west with their sights set on a place where they could freely practice their faith. Religious freedom was their primary pull factor. They found a new home in Salt Lake City, Utah. They believed this area to be their promised land, a place divinely appointed for them. It was here that they could establish their own communities, practice their religion freely, and live according to their beliefs. This strong sense of religious destiny was a powerful pull factor. Let's pause to reflect on our first guiding question. Why did members of the Church of Latter-day Saints settle in Utah? Now, let's shift gears to our second case study, the First Great Migration. This was a significant movement that occurred in the early to mid-20th century when six million black Americans migrated from the rural south to the urban north and west. 
This section includes images that depict historical events characterized by racism for the purpose of explaining the push factors for black people from parts of the American South during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The South, where the majority of black Americans lived during this time period, was filled with challenges. For one, they lived under the oppressive laws of the Jim Crow era, which enforced strict racial segregation. In addition, they faced intimidation and violence from the racist group, the Ku Klux Klan. This meant that many black citizens were not safe in their own homes. World War I further escalated the instability, as it disrupted the southern economy and caused job shortages. These conditions served as powerful push factors, driving many black Americans to look for better opportunities elsewhere. The North beckoned with a variety of pull factors. The prospect of economic opportunity was a key motivator as the surge of industrialization and urbanization in northern cities created many new jobs. In these cities, black workers could earn better wages working in factories compared to the low-paying agricultural jobs in the South. Additionally, the North saw an explosion of black culture, particularly during the Harlem Renaissance and the lesser known but vibrant Chicago Black Renaissance. The Harlem and Chicago Black Renaissances, centered in Harlem, New York and Chicago, Illinois, were two movements where black writers, artists, and musicians flourished and gained national attention. This painting, Blues, by Archibald Motley Jr., depicts a vibrant scene of a Paris jazz club during the Chicago Black Renaissance. The painting reflects the energy, cultural expression, and social life that thrived during this time period. These cultural movements not only enriched American society, but also attracted more black Americans to these cities, leading to significant demographic shifts. The Great Migration greatly increased the population of black people in northern cities and laid the groundwork for future civil rights activism. Pause to answer the question, what caused the first Great Migration and how did it impact northern cities? For our last stop, we'll look at the westward journey of two groups collectively known as the Okies and Arkies. Okies and Arkies were migrants from Oklahoma, Arkansas, and other states. The terms Okie and Arkie were first used in an offensive way to belittle the migrants traveling the country in search of work. However, the group eventually embraced the term and made it their own. This group fled the southwestern United States during the 1930s due to a combination of push and pull factors. Their struggles and determination were famously documented by photographer Dorothea Lange, who captured their journey in a series of images. Pay close attention to the historical photos in this section of the video. You guessed it, they're all by Lange. In fact, there she is, sitting on top of that car. In our PDF, we'll take a closer look at how her images give us insight into the lives of migrants in the United States. Many Okies and Arkies journeyed along Route 66, the famous highway that stretched from Chicago to California. The highway helped facilitate their movement by providing them with a direct route to California. Now let's dive into the push factors that led them to make this journey. The Dust Bowl, a period of severe dust storms, ravaged the southwestern United States and decimated their agricultural livelihoods. We'll take a closer look at the Dust Bowl in our next lesson. Alongside this environmental disaster, Okies and Arkies grappled with economic difficulties. Agricultural development had left the soil depleted and unproductive. Coupled with mounting debt and banking issues during the Great Depression, many families found themselves unable to sustain their way of life. Meanwhile, California presented a beacon of hope, offering pull factors that made the westward journey seem worthwhile. The state's thriving agricultural industry offered job opportunities in farming that were scarce back home. The prospect of farming in California's fertile valleys offered a chance for the Okies and Arkies to rebuild their lives and secure a future for their families. Let's pause and reflect. Why did the Okies and Arkies migrate west? We've explored three historical instances of internal migration in the United States, each with its unique push and pull factors. 
Remember the scenario we started with, considering moving for school? Just like you, each group we examined had to weigh their own push and pull factors before making the decision to move. As we've seen, the movement of people isn't just about geography. It's also about fleeing from economic hardship and persecution in pursuit of better opportunities, safety, and cultural expression. Well, it's time to hit the road, so until next time, keep making history. Hey.